Morning guys and girls, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Nigel from the Norfolk Fishing Channel. Today is Monday the 22nd of January. We're bang smack in the middle of Storm Aisha. And it's 6 o'clock in the morning, it's 5 past 6. It's high tide at 8 minutes past 6. Uh, I got here a little bit earlier, but I've just had a walk up. I've just come down to Gorson on sea. I did have a look at the webcams last night, uh, Sheringham and Cromer webcam, and I looked this morning, but you know, the webcam's high up on a pole. Um, it looked flat calm. I just had a walk. I was going to go to, I was toying on Caister on Sea or Yarmouth North Beach, but I thought I'd come here first. I can go to the pier, have a look at the state of the sea. Um, I tried to film it, but it's too dark. Um, but it's no, the, the waves are massive. Um, 10 and 12 foot crashing over the barriers so it's absolutely like a washing machine on full full go, uh, full go out there um, there's no chance the river's really full but it should be high tide um, pretty much now 607 so it should be high tide so it should be uh, slack water soon and then it'll be ebbing but uh, with all the storms we had, I have no idea what the uh, pool's going to be like. Um, has been quite pretty bad, and last time I bust my rod, but um, we'll give it a go. I'm going to get suited and booted, get set up. Um, I, I set one rod up, see what see what the state of the flow's like and the tide and weed and all the rest of it. Um, catch reports are slow. Obviously, it's the end of January, odd white in and a few dabs and things like that. So we'll see how we go. I've just got fish baits with me. I've got mussels, uh, prawns, the usual suspects, mackerel, herring, squid. So I'm going to get suited and booted, get out there. It's uh, still <clears throat> quite a strong southwesterly breeze. I was listening to it all last night, but it is supposed to, fingers crossed, touch wood, um, calm down by about 7 o'clock this morning, 8 o'clock this morning. But we'll, we'll, we'll soon find out. But we're out. I'm going to give it a go. Um, that's all you can do. You know, it's not always about catching the fish. We, we go fishing for catch fish. So that'll be great. But it's just about getting out and making the most of your days off. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, it's quarter to seven. Hope you can hear me all right. If not, I'll get the microphone in a minute. I just made up a new rig last night. I'm going to start off with that one. It's got a three up, one down rig. A three up flapper. I can take the one down off if, if it's a bit snaggy or if I don't need it. But um, I just put them closer together. And I've just done uh, three up with uh, about four inch hook length, a little snood. I've got 25 pound floor carbon floor max line on there. Just like two must have Viking hooks. There's three of them. One, two, three, and a little washing line. I've got a six ounce lead on. 40 pound ASIO line to a 2 0. Must have Viking. And a great big bit of squid. I'm going to get this cast out and 
see what the, uh, see what the flow's like. But I thought I'd try this. And uh, if there's any fish about, just like a fish finding rig. We'll, we'll see. We'll go from there. Okay, it's not a bad morning actually. It's about 12 degrees. It's quite warm, although it's strong southwesterly. And it's uh, some of the waves are starting to barrel along this bank in here. I'll show you in a minute. But it's way too rough out at sea. But what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just hooking over one of the pins, just make casting a bit easier. I bought myself a, a finger stall for someone commented on braid, so only a couple of quid and it saves your fingers. The flow is going right to left at the minute slightly. So I'm just gonna cast this one. Sorry, the flow's going right to left, so I'm just gonna cast this one to the right. Gonna give that one a bit further cast. I'm just gonna hold that because that's just hit the bottom there. Wow. That is deep. That is deep. I'm just gonna get that, let that bow form. Got one rod set up at the minute. We'll see how things go. I've just brought this rod back, it was in the shed. And so uh, I had two of these blue oceans. Uh, the ceramics have gone on a couple of the uh, eyes, and one of the rods, the end eye sort of like support bracket uh, the welding had come off the one it was a miserable day I stripped them both down the eyes I had an old rod I took the eyes off the old rod and I whipped them on and how I dieted it and got one decent uh, actually the rod my late uncle gave me Dennis and uh, but that that broke it was an old rod but it was an old Shakespeare 12 foot uh, beach caster but the eyes were brilliant they're all double legged and uh, really good ceramics in it and really good eyes I, I kept all the eyes off of it and I'll put them on this rod and they are, the, the eyes and ceramics um, they're like a it's like a double rubber sealant with like a split in the middle and inside is like a white hard solid ceramic like stone not like these cheap carbon ones now. Um, I put them in the end eye and the, the next two eyes. And uh, so the, the one that I broke as well, I've uh, put carbon dowel in it from an old rod. Put a bit of toweling around it just to make sure it's nice and tight in the butt section bit or the thicker bit. Again, put a load of Araldite down it, put the carbon dowel inside, put the two back together, and then whipped over the top. Oh, I'll see what that's like later on, see if it, see if it uh, holds. Uh, probably that one would probably just be on light duties, like four and five ounces at the most. So. Look at that. It's really gorgeous. I mean, it doesn't look like it, but. <clears throat> Off the pier, the waves are absolutely crashing over the uh, railings with some rocks down there. There's no chance of getting off the end of there.
it's half past seven. Not had any bites as yet, or what I can tell. I've had a few baits gone missing, but whether that's just on the cast or I don't know, I've not seen anything. But I think it's half past seven, the tide is just starting to turn by the looks of it. So early days. I know it's been slow. There's no chance off the beach. I can still see the waves crashing over the barriers now. But uh, I quite like it here, it's sheltered. You get in the corner, you're out of the wind. It's a southwest city, so you've got all the buildings and everything in the way. I can see the waves crashing in over. Uh, that car park was absolutely flooded this morning, so I was a bit wary. So, I'm going to have a look at it later on. It probably will be calming down as I say, more as the day goes on. But at the minute there's just no chance out there. No chance. Okay, it's quarter past eight. Just cast out. Refreshed all the baits. Pretty slack at the minute the tide. It's not doing anything really. It's not really pulling. I'll we'll just put this, uh, we we'll tried prawn and squid on this one two hooks we've got a bit of mackerel and squid on the top hook just squid on the bottom that one's still got the big wrap on there I'm just tightening up a little bit more not much flow let's see if I can, see if I can uh, detect any weather and the colder water, crabs should start to disappear and start burying into the sand. So. a little bend in the rod so no more braid I can see everything but I don't know if it will ever see because they're small literally four inch no more hook lengths whether they're struggling to get hold of it or it's just crabs we'll soon find out casing and it was all right. The back flew off it but it's just the casing. So. I'm glad I've uh, made the decision to come here just to check it out first because I think if it went anywhere else I'd have not been able to fish it. Thursday, what Thursday off? The 25th, it's my birthday, so work's giving me that day off. Makes no difference to me, I'd rather have just my normal day, Sunday, Monday, two days together, but we're giving them a birthday off, so I wrote it that day off, so what well, I thought I'd do on Thursday, yesterday I got up early, went down to the local supermarket, it's a fish counter. Really cheap uh, sardines there, so I 
I've got 18 sardines, a couple of little uh, joey herring, and a couple of oh, and a mackerel. I'm going to do a bit of piking, but I'm going to go to uh, one of the local lakes. I should head off to uh, Billingford Lakes to give Lake Two a go. Seems to hold some good 20 pound pikes, so it says on the website. So we'll give that a go on Thursday. Watch out for this big bugger coming along. I thought I'd pull my line for this one. He'll swing his ass around right where my line was. Sarnia and Liberty, never seen this one before. If all these are coming in and out here, you, you, you know how deep it is. That's why it took about, takes about four or five seconds, sometimes even more on a high tide for the five or six ounce lead to hit the bottom. So you know it's got to be at least 30, 40 foot deep. Not much of a guide boat behind, is he? I don't know, I thought he'd been in front. out and I counted that there. That was nearly six seconds before that hit the bottom. That's worth a six ounce lead. So that's steep. You just gotta watch these waves sometimes barreling over here, you don't get a face full or sometimes they lash over here, especially if we've been in southwesterly, it can barrel in. 
be careful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so with a with a one ounce lead, it's normally about a couple of foot per second. So six ounce lead, so it's six seconds. It's got to be at least forty foot deep. I'll just put smaller baits on that one but put more on the hook if that makes sense I normally leave a bit of a flapper but I watched a couple of videos online and people just seem to put all the bait on the hook and so I've obviously if the fish has got to take it or want the, want the bait they've got to take the whole hook in the mouth so I'm going to try that not left any flapper just put all the bait on the hook smaller bits just starting with uh, herring and uh, squid. Got another big boat coming in. Got one going out, one coming in. So an old battleship, this one. An old warship, wasn't it? It's 8 o'clock, it's been really quiet. I've had two bites, but I missed them both. Setting up this rod, look around, bang, bang. The time I got to it, and we're gone. So, I've just seen a seal pop his head up. So what I've done is, I've set my other rod up. Let's put a big bait on here. Just put a basic pulley rig on. I've got two 2.0 two hooks, bait holder style. So put a four ounce gripper lead on. I've got my Lenafe 14 foot rod, Shakespeare Salt Surf 7000, 60 pound ASIO shock leader, the 40 pound H round Hercules braid. That's a 70 pound rig body on there, and 25 pound fluorocarbon Fluoromax. 220 hooks and a big bit of uh, squid and muscle and uh, just going to give this one the big one see if I can get as far as I can turn you around
I'll just cast that all to the right. I'm just still working out what the tide's doing. It's been a bit weird at the minute. Still sort of seems to be slightly flooding right to left. But it's not too bad today, actually. It flow's not too bad at the minute. We'll see when it starts to ebb and what it's going to be like. So it's all right at the minute. But I'll cast that one as far as I can. That's holding nicely. I'm going to bring this one up. We did have a couple of bangs on there, but I was setting this one up and I've got the time I got to it, I missed them. So, there might be crabs. This is a... This was worth a fiver, or it was just under a fiver. That'll save you all your shaping on your finger. Just cast that one out and left the drag slightly loose, just in case. Ah, what a fantastic morning. But you can still see the waves breaking all over there. Okay, it's just gone half eight. It's quiet. <coughs> but what I thought I'd do, while it's quiet, I'm going to have a bit of a experiment, play around. So, just speed things up a bit. So, I've changed my rig. Got one up, one down, clip down rig. Six ounce lead. 2 0 uh, Viking. Sean O'Gassi up there with a big bit of herring and squid, a bit of squid tentacle. And the same on the top, this is a size 2 Mustad Viking. Again, with just a little bit of squid and herring on there. more distance on that rig. It just helps speed things up as well. I can start baiting this one up, have a one or two rigs ready to go, just unclip, keep changing and experimenting, see if I can get a bite from somewhere. I've just still got the uh, big bait on the right hand one, I'll leave that. I'll check that in 10 minutes, make sure it's not being crabbed out. Very strangely, the tide is really, really snappy there. There's not a lot of pull at all, I was expecting to be racing. Well, I just brought the big rig in, and there was on the end of it, which is not what you want to see. Come on back. So, I'm going to ditch the big rig. 
if you can see a big spot there of oil slick is where my bait's gone. It's right down there. Big round circle. All the oil off that fish. Watch these seagulls. Right like a few times they fly into your line and can rip your rod out the rest. Send it into the river if you're not careful. Yeah, I'm going to ditch the big rig, so it's getting crabbed out on that one, so I'm going to go back to the 3-0 crapper rig. I've just put a corn and squid on each one, and I've got a couple of little baby Argentinian squid, the whole body, and I've stuffed it with a couple of mussels, put that on the bottom hook with some 2 and I'll get that cast out. Everything I put on at the minute is just getting stripped by crabs, so the only thing that's not getting stripped is the squid. So I'm just going to bait up with just squid only. I've just got two big bits of squid on the hook. I just cast that one literally two thirds of the way across. Flow is well manageable today with four ounces. So that's just got. It's just got squid only. A bit, bit of squid on the bottom hook and some squid head and tentacles. A nice big bit of <coughs> the white body squid meat on the top hook. The one up, one down, click down rig. I'll probably bring this one up. It's probably been stripped. This is the one that's down. That's it, but I'll just go with squid, see what happens. I mean, if there's anything around and they want it, they want it. Otherwise, we're just wasting bait because it's getting crabbed at the minute. Until there's any sign of fish, just wasting everything that I put on the hook. It's getting crabbed out. That's the problem. Too many of them. Now. Come 
I'm not losing much of squid on it and then, yeah. I'm not ragging that off, so I'm not losing anything. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. Squid on all round now. Squid on the one up, one down, clip down rig. All squid on the three up, one down. So uh, gone all in, six squids in, maximum bet. We can't we get anything, we get anything. But uh, there's no point, I've seen, as I say, until I see actual signs of a proper bite from a whiting or a dab or anything like that. Seems pointless at the minute, just wasting bait. I'm going to get crabbed, stripped, they're getting stripped out every sort of time the cast down to about two minutes. And I can see the little rattle rattle because I'm winding tight up to it, there's no flow. And I'm just gently winding in, <clears throat> and then there's crabs on it every time. So, as I said, a bit too much to ask. Perfect day, blue skies, bit of a strong gusty wind at times. Well, what's the tripod even though it's weighted down? There's just no fish. Strange one. Odd. Not not a white him. Not one single white him. I was half toying with the idea this morning. Well, I had one rod, just quickly packing it away and go to the tackle shop up the road there and getting some worms, but we're getting that much many crabbed crabs out. There's a point to put a worm on. But we're out again, our daily dose of vitamin uh, D. If the tides this uh, slack, there's a very little flow. Even though it looks a bit rough out there, I'm just wondering whether it would be uh, worth a chance, chancing your arm off the end of the pier. We'll take the drive up there later on. stab an hour or two in there, over there up the camp. I can't see anybody else over there fishing it. I don't see anybody else. If it's even open, I'm not sure if the car park's actually open. There's no cars on it, so wherever they shut it down for whatever reason. Flooding, repairs or whatever. Sure. Okay, it's 11 o'clock, the wind's picking up again. Just sent the tripod over. Don't know if it's going to be rod. But uh, it's a nice point to get over. Little uh, plastics for to hold the rod in, but let's bring it back every time now. Three or four of these on the line every time, so I ain't going to give it too much longer. It's a shame, we can't stay. I think it's a bit fruitless today at the minute. I'm going to give it another 20 minutes, see how it goes. The 
was saying, I was going to come here this morning, I mean, it's now nearly low tide, but this morning when I got here, bang on high tide, it was crashing all over it. Away. I'll be fishing off the beach this morning. We're at low water now. I am going to give this peg this ear a try. I've never fished here, and I keep saying I'm going to. I mean, when the weather's right, I reckon that's bang on down here for a bass or running along this wall, it's got to be. I was wondering why it's been closed, but after the last storms and high tides, you can see all this board in here, it's all been ripped away, all them steel posts are all bent to hell, all the iron girders all been ripped off. Must be some hell of a force to rip them off, I tell you. And we're all piled up there. All that fence has been ripped away. We've got some really heavy waves coming over that, crashing into them crash rails there and just smashing them to bits. Hi right, guys, we're all done. Back at the car, it's quarter to twelve. Uh, very disappointing day. I know it was going to be hard. Uh, looking at the catch reports and listening to everything, I knew it was going to be tough. But if they had one bite when I was setting up the other rod this morning, if it was a bite. But yeah, just crabs and crabs and crabs. Uh, it got worse as the day went on. There's no no weed. Um, very little flow. Really gusty, so it's, get, it's getting really gusty now again. T twice I just caught the uh, tripod. He's even weighted down. I had all my leads in a box, put it in one of the bags, hooked it onto the tripod, but getting some just, it's not all the time, just get a sudden gust and it's like, you know, 50, 60 kilometers an hour and it's just, you just got to watch everything. But uh, that's, that's it for me today. No fish, I'm afraid. I tried, you can't say I didn't try. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So onwards and upwards, I suppose. Just got to dust yourself down and get back on the saddle again. All right, all the best, guys. I'll see you again in another video. Take care. Cheerio. They banished me, never to be seen. To a place where the years always fill the screams. So hot that the land only grows weeds. A place filled with demons and ghosts, tumbleweeds. Betrayed by some comrades at too brute. I might get you all back. It's not if, no, it's when. Better watch out, cause I'm coming for revenge. I'm a train art, I'm a go far. I will learn with every new star. Got a cold heart, yeah, I'm feeling art. Enemies give me energy from the start Got an addiction to winning So I will work till I get it The sweat is dripping I'm in it I'll never stop till I finish I'm feeling demons possessed And they took a hold of my vessel The energy of a devil Yeah A new man A new me Better watch out You ain't never seen a beast I don't always have control He could beat me Got a chip on his shoulder And he got some sharp teeth Anyone in my way And anyone who betrayed Anyone I have to face I wipe them out like the plague